messenger of God and he is a messiah. I don't need prophecy from the Old Testament. Right, I'm not I got no, my Quran. I'm not, I'm not no educated man. Yeah. But you believe in all the other prophets also, yeah? I do, yeah. You know we Muslims don't discriminate between prophets. We acknowledge all the true prophets of okay. God. All we right. acknowledge Prophet like, Muhammad, what, Jesus, what about Moses. Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. What about help it? me to understand. What that. about it? I'm asking you to help me. To what does it say? As you know yourself, it calls him wonderful counselor, yeah. mighty God, yeah. eternal father. Who calls Jesus eternal father? Let's put it that way. Well, does anyone, does anyone... That's why I'm asking you to help me. Yeah. But you're the asking me to tell me this no, time. So you know I'm the reason I don't believe that prophecy is about Jesus? Okay, One point me. is that he's called eternal father. Yes, we know that the Father is distinct from the Son. But before it says the Son unto us is God. Yeah, but even, even that, one thing you need to acknowledge is that the Son is distinct from the Father. The Son is not the Father. That's and true. no one ever calls Jesus or confuses Him with the, with the Father. They always say the Father is the one who is in charge of the Son. He commands Him what to do. He worships Him as God. So we know for a fact that Jesus never confuses himself with the Father. All right, but I'm asking you to help me understand what was Isaiah speaking about? Isaiah was speaking about pro probably another person. Yes, that's what the Jewish people say. Why did he Some of them him? say that he's talking about... Uh, why does he call this some God? Look, the term God again in Hebrew, yes, many people are called God. It wasn't only Isaiah who called. For example, do you know that Moses is called Elohim? Okay, carry Elohim on. to the Pharaoh. The term Elohim means God. Do you think Moses yeah, is God? Look at the context exactly my point, my friend. Thank you very much. That's why I'm actually the And that's me. the reason I'm telling you. Look at the context. The context doesn't tell you that this is about Jesus. The context doesn't say that this is about Jesus or, or that this is about Almighty God. Because if someone knows Jesus, they will know that none of the government was upon his shoulder. None of the government. Will you explain to me Isaiah 53 then? What does it say again? As you know, it's speaking about... For his our affirmities, he will be crushed uh, by his stripes. For him, stuff like that. Help me to understand. Isaiah, if you read Isaiah 52, it's clear in there. So the context again is important. I think I have it here. If you let me just quote it quickly. So many people believe that Isaiah 53 is referring to. I think it's Isaiah 42 also, and it speaks about in the wilderness, someone will make a way straight for Yahweh. Yeah. Jesus. Right? Isaiah 42. I can't, I, this is what I'm saying. Yeah? If you can't argue, don't no, argue. I'm not arguing, <laughs> but I'm just saying I can't get my mind around yeah. that this is not Jesus Christ. It is not, because if Jesus Christ was indeed God Almighty, then he wouldn't be worshipping God himself, would he? Can you get your head around that? That if, if there is a God Almighty, would he ever worship anybody else as God? But I'm, I'm asking you to help me to ask, understand Isaiah. No, no, because you, I, I believe you're a man who uses logic. That's why you're asking me, help right. me understand yeah, you're this. asking me, when I'm asking you to no, help it's me, a logical you're question. asking me a question. Yeah, right. but this is, so this is for you, you to, to use logic. I'm asking you to educate no, no. me you see, my friend, something that you believe. Yeah. At the end of the day, this is about us as human beings using our intellect but if to you, know God. Right. But if you believe in something and you keep on asking me questions, that means I have to explain what I believe in. And I'm still not getting no further on with you and what you believe. No, it's not about your so belief. It's you about believe? your logic, your understanding, so who, using your intellect. No, Forget about all the holy books. Logic, sure okay, my logic is this. If there is an almighty God, yeah. then he wouldn't worship anyone. Do you agree or disagree with that logic? Okay, I can understand what you're No, but do you agree or disagree with that logic? Because uh, come on, you should have some, your own, what do you say, um, understanding of certain things. Well, I do understand that the Father is not the Son and the Son is not the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but do you believe God would... You know all this already. No, no, listen. Do you, ever be... do you ever understand the point I'm making? That God Almighty doesn't have a God. Okay, all right. I'm going to accept you, what you're saying. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Don't just accept. I want to know if you understood that. Okay, yeah, I understand what okay? you're saying. So God Almighty does not have a God, period. Okay? okay. There's no ifs and buts about it for people who believe in God. I know. But... Okay? Now, if Jesus... Worship God, yes. yes. What does that imply? Okay, I understand what you're saying. Which okay, is, that, that which is, Jesus is can't be God if he's worshiping God. Absolutely. All right. Does it make sense but to you? I'm still asking you. Yeah. What was Isaiah speaking about? I think Isaiah 53. In I think all these prophecies. What what is what is your main point about Isaiah 53? Do you well, know? You ready? He's, he's making straight for Yahweh. He's not, he's not Yahweh. saying he's oh, prophet. He's not saying he's messenger or anything because he's saying God. He's, he's, not, he's calling him Yahweh. 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 I think you are talking about Jesus. No, when you talk about Yahweh, yes, it is talking about God Almighty. Jesus himself never considered him to be Yahweh. So how can you say that prophecy is about Jesus? 
would I re would I believe the the, the testimony of Jesus because or testimony of someone who's interpreting Jesus Isaiah? Or, sorry, according to the Christian so faith, was pushed for our affirmative. Say again. Was, according to the Christian faith, yeah. that Jesus was pushed for our affirmative, and he was striped for <laughs> for our healing. You already know all this anyway, so I'm asking. No, you the question was, you. did he ever claim to be God? That is the question I want to ask you. Because that is your main but point, like, isn't it, about Isaiah 53? But, but that's what I'm saying, why, I can't get my head around it. I can't, the most sense it makes for me that it must be Jesus. It can't be. That's the sense that it makes to me, sir. No. And to you, it doesn't, it makes a difference. My friend, you yourself said that God cannot have a God. I'm saying, I, I You yourself you're admitted saying, that. No, you, no, you no, admitted that, because I asked you that. I didn't. I don't truly believe that. Well, you don't believe I, that I God cannot have I a God? I understand what you're saying. So do you not believe that God doesn't Only have a God? Because I understand what you're saying. It doesn't mean I'm agreeing. No, no. All right. Do you believe God can have a God? God can have a God. No, because there's only one God. Exactly. So you do believe it then. You but believe what I'm saying. I you don't only understand it, but you also believe it. And you know it. As I said to you, sir, I'm no big educator. Right? It's not about educator. My, my friend, I, God has I, given uh, intellect to everyone. I understand. Including you, including compared myself, the including hours that you everyone else. It in the hours that I find. It's not even compared. It's not about, look, this is simple logic. God doesn't have a God. Simple yeah, logic. You record it. Okay, anyway. So, look, the important point yeah, is this. If, if Jesus, I, I would rather, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, you will believe my teachings. Sir, the reason why I want to do is to learn. Yeah, of course. What's your name? John. John. Johnny? But that don't mean I'm going to believe what you're saying. Keep an open mind. I'm my brother, try keep and an open mind. Why you believe. And That's look, why I'm trying Jesus to said, if you love me, you will believe my teaching. Jesus teaching is that only father is the only true God. So if you love Jesus, you'll, you'll obey his teachings. Otherwise, Possibly. You're, you're obeying the church. And then how, do I, how do I get around when he says he's the only way to the father? Sorry? How do you get around when he says he's the only way to the He's the way, but not the destination. By the way, we believe that Jesus was the way during his time. We have no issues with that. Every prophet during his time, if the people did not believe him, then they would not be led to Almighty God and salvation. So Jesus, you know when Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, we say amen to that. No one. At that time, no one, if they disobey Jesus' yes, teaching, right. will go to the Father, means go to God, will have salvation. And today, my friend, if you disbelieve Jesus' teaching, you will not have salvation either. So when Jesus says in John 17, 3, that the Father is the only true God, he didn't say the Father, Jesus, and the Holy, uh, the Holy Spirit, he said only the Father. Oh, okay. This so believe his teachings. This is a problem of life. Yeah? Which is? In John 8, yeah. where he claims to be I am. And they pick up stones and stones. I am is again, doesn't mean Yahweh. But th but this is I am doesn't mean Yahweh. Right. Let's put it that way. Simple as that. Okay. okay? <coughs> in, in the Jewish context, I am. No, even in the Jewish context. If you if you look at Why? the Jewish translation of Exodus 3.14, you will not find the term I am. You'll find that he... He will be, sorry, he will be or he is something about the future. Why did he pick up stones? Because they always wanted to kill Jesus. Because he was claiming not only to be the Messiah, but to have the truth from God Almighty. And he was always rebuking them for their falsehood. So obviously, obviously they wanted to kill him. No, I know you want to have a discussion, but the important thing is this. The Jewish people wanted to kill him, not because he spoke the truth. Sorry, not, not because he was... Uh, uh, claiming to say something about God or about saying I am they want to do stone him because Jesus in John 10 30 answers that question he says that the Jewish people are called gods and all I say is I am God's son you see he's trying to compare himself to them I've been told yeah? I've been told yeah when he says before Abraham I am he's claiming to be God no, that's not true you have been told wrong you know why you've been told wrong? Because this is what the Trinitarians and the church want you to believe. And what about if you're wrong? If I'm wrong, prove it to me. Simple no, as that. What I'm just saying is, if it's wrong, and Jesus is who he claims to be, what does that mean for Okay, you? how about this? Forget about you, forget about me. Let's see what Jesus testifies to God Almighty. See, in I John. Ask you a question. You come to a different... No, but I'm asking. I'm asking a question. Right. I'm saying my I'm testimony. Johnny, my question. Huh? Sorry, my, my answer or your answer. Yes? Listen. Do you think that is better than Jesus' own testimony? Listen. When Jesus himself never no, ever claimed... I, listen, I appreciate it if you don't put me on this. I'm not going on this. Place. Okay. Well, I, I speak his corner, you know? I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And I respect, so, so, I respect you. And by the way, you, you as a missionary were... were I just handed it. Yeah, I know. You as a missionary wanted to hand this to Muslims. So, I think we... It's a good thing we had a conversation. 
Yeah. Maybe we learn from each other, isn't it? Like, I don't know, like, and if we were talking about something that I know very well, I can have a conversation. Yeah, yeah but if you but are, if you are as a missionary distributing about Jesus Christ, and you talk about Jesus Christ, then I should, I would assume that you know a bit about Jesus Christ. Good. Not so, worried, would honest. you, would you, why would you not take the testimony of Jesus Christ? Why do you oppose it? So, when Jesus says the Father is the only so true God, when he says I am the way, uh, look at all this stuff. <laughs> no, you won't. We actually I'm not qualified for this. Okay, that's I'm fine. Johnny, no problem. All right. Ashim, Look, all Ashim I'm saying. Was a good man. He was he, no, I never said Johnny wasn't a good man. Did I say you're not a good man? Very good man. Very good. Man. Yeah. The reason he came to me because he said he wants to learn something from me. And look, you know, we learn from each other. There shouldn't be any arrogance here. At the end of the day, I myself would consider myself to be a student so of many other people who know more than me. You obviously understand I believe in Jesus. No, I don't. The only way I know. You are a Trinitarian, you believe in the Trinity. So normally, okay. I'm, but I'm saying that Jesus himself, he testifies against you. Okay, but on the day of judgment, we'll find out. Yeah, but it might be too late. So work now and obey the teachings of Jesus, who I acknowledges you, only the Father, the his I, God, the as a true God. When I see you debate people, yeah. why are we going back? <laughs> the irony, then this lady is also recording. I know, I, I'm assuming I know, she's with you. I know you need videos with what you come out here to do. So no, no, this is for us for educational purposes mainly. Yeah. You know, for us many times, you, even though you, interlocutor would, is not someone that we want to talk to, but we do for so educational purposes. As a good man, I respect if you don't come you have to tell the cameraman, it's not my channel. Just come to talk. Fair enough. Speak to the cameraman. Speak to the cameraman. It's not my prerogative. It's not my. I come to have a private conversation. I don't want to be plastered all over YouTube. Guys, maybe you should listen to this brother if he doesn't want to be on YouTube. Can you just record me and not him? Is that okay? I just wanted to know a few things that was all. That's fine. That's why you believe. Yeah. But you keep on asking me questions. No, I I told you what I believe as well. God bless. You. But please don't deny the testimony of Jesus. I know, and I believe that he is the Lord and Savior. So if Jesus says to you that the when, Father is the only I'm true God, why do you deny it? Whether I'm educated to have a conversation with you is one thing. But that's to not mean it's inaccurate. Johnny, if Jesus tells you that the Father is the only true God, why I, do you deny it? I used to start asking you how about how that's made, how that's made, how that's made. I'm not asking I know you. and you don't know. I'm not asking that's you. I'm it. telling you about Jesus' testimony. Yeah, I'm not asking I'm you anything. I'm just giving you an example. I, yes. If you don't know, you don't know, my friend. I don't know. No, but what it seems to be that even the even the very Bible in which Jesus is testifying, you disbelieve them. Why is that, Johnny? You're saying I disbelieve. Them. Yeah, you you disbelieve the fact that Jesus. Yeah, but you just can't take the parts that you want to say. No, but every part. You, you show me. I tell you what. You show me any part in the Bible where Jesus tells you to obey and worship a triune God. There's none. Yeah, but you can apply that to your own belief. Not... I do. And that's and why I abide. The same question. You know, you know. If you ask me, Johnny, if you ask me the same question about the Quran, why do we worship Allah? There are several places in the Quran where Allah but tells. I'm not you. Yeah, but that's, you said it applies to me, and I'm telling no, you why it applies to me. It does. It does because anyway. if God tells you that He is God, then you shouldn't accept anyone else as God. If Jesus tells you who the true God is, then you should obey. If you love Jesus, then obey His teachings. That's all I'm asking. Okay, Johnny. Anyway, very nice talking to you. Hopefully next time we'll have a better conversation. Personal name. These are very crucial things which are missing in the New Testament. Yes? One of the most important things that, G uh, that Christians rely upon is the crucifixion of Jesus. To me, the crucifixion is a proof that he's, a, he's not God. You know why? Because both crucifixion and resurrection does not apply to God Almighty. Because God Almighty, by definition, is immortal. Yes? He is all-knowing. He's omniscient. He's someone who is omnipotent. That means he is the most powerful being out there. He doesn't die by his own creation. All this proves to us that Jesus cannot be God by any measure. Okay, you right. see what I mean? So, so when Jesus himself claims that he has not come except to do the will of the Father. Yeah. Yes, in John 17, 21. He tells that people who will call me Lord, Lord and do miracles in my name and cast out demons in my name and do wondrous works in my name on that day i will tell them get away from me you evil doers why would jesus cast out and basically ignore and reject the people who do things in his own name isn't that something that the trinitarians consider to be one of the best things to do things in his name because jesus says if you ask in my name i will not reject your prayers now these people are doing things in his name but what is the most important wait one second johnny and you, uh, you can make a point after this 
You know why? Because prior to that, he says, do the will of the Father. Okay, all right. okay so anyone who does the will of Jesus, he is not the one. Jesus is, Jesus is going to reject him as an evil doer. But anyone who does the will of the Father, then that is a different matter. Because we're going to please the Lord, and it says in Matthew 21, 22, if you ask in my name, Jesus, Lord, exactly if you my ask point. in my name, if you believe that you will receive them, if you yeah. ask for prayer, but you have to pray continuously. And it says in Luke 1, verse 37, but nothing is impossible for our Lord. So there's no such thing as saints or any other gods to turn around and go to our God. He's our Heavenly Father. So why does Jesus, our, why does Jesus, yeah, why does Jesus tell them, the people who are doing miracles in his name, why does he say, I have nothing to do with you, get away from me, we will do it? Why? No, I'm asking payment. the lady this question. You because, the same question. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The reason Jesus said, even though they were doing things in his name, he tells them, get away from me, you evil doers. You know why? Because they were not doing the will of the Father. Because he's our shepherd, we have to follow in his path. Yeah. He's a, he, follow his path to go to the gates of the Father. Yeah, but he's not the master, he's a servant, remember? Yeah. Okay, you know that scripture very well. What else is it? I never knew. Yeah. By the way, he said he's a servant of God, not the master. And Jesus says, the master is not equal to the servant. And we're servants. We are servants as well, of course. We are servants of God, no doubt about that. If Jesus is a servant of God, who are we? We are less than the prophets. We are less than the messengers in our authority, even in our understanding of God. Yes, we are nothing in comparison to them. So if Jesus and all the other prophets claim to be the servants of God, who are we? We are just lay persons. Have a true kind of faithful heart to the Lord and be, he's, he's a provider for us to keep faithful. And we keep faithful to his word, to his promises. It's just as what he's Who's a provider? Us. Do you think Jesus was a provider? Jesus himself ate and his mother ate. That is what the Quran says. You know what that tells us? No, no, no. Jesus himself sustained himself. He required sustenance. In fact, when he was in Mary's womb for nine months, you're a woman, you should understand about pregnancy. No, not at all. I'm not a married Well, you, you don't have to be married to understand, okay? How a mother, what a mother is. Yes, your mother and my mother, when, when they had us in their, in their womb, yes? Who do you think was providing the sustenance for them, for these babies in the womb of their mothers? It was God Almighty, yes? Similarly, Jesus, do you think who, anybody other than God provided him sustenance? No, it was God Almighty. Jesus says, I by myself can do nothing. John 5.30. Do you remember that passage? As I hear, I judge. And he says, my judgment. Sorry. He says, my testimony. If you don't, don't believe my testimony. Don't get me in it. Yes, don't, don't tell them. Yeah? He says, my testimony is not true. But the one who sent me testified about me. That shows, you know, every time, every time Jesus. No, no, I know. Look, whenever Jesus, whenever Jesus spoke about prayers to God, for example, when the people came to him and they asked him, how shall we pray? What do you think Jesus, how do you think Jesus responded to that? He says, pray like the way I pray. And how did Jesus pray? Like the Muslims. No, I'm not talking about the prostration. I'm talking about the, the words that he used even. Yes. He says, our father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. You know the Lord's Prayer, right? Yes. Did he say our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven? No. So even his... No, no, no. That's what he said. That's what the Christians say. Jesus never ever said they're all one. In fact, Jesus says the only one, the only true God is the Father. He never ever said to believe in the Trinity. Jesus was sent as a body of God. It was his son, so it's the body. God doesn't have a body. No, but he was sent in body. Yeah, of course, so you're sending body. Everyone is sending yes. body. You're sending body. I'm sending body. But, but Jesus died for us, but then he risen again as the spirit. So it's all in one. But so we all we will die one day. And we'll also rise in spirit. Know, but I know I'm going to be living for eternity. You will be resurrected. You will be resurrected. I'll be resurrected. All of us here who will die, both death and resurrection. Listen, listen. Both death, both death and resurrection only applies to mortals do you understand that does it apply to god does death apply to god you tell me isn't it clear cut it's not something that we need to think about if you believe in god and if you believe in god you will you will understand that god almighty does not die god almighty you know death that doesn't touch god you know why because in first timothy 6 16 god says he alone is immortal who lives in an approachable light, whom know. no man has touched, okay. sorry, whom no man has seen or can see. Now, if death doesn't apply to God, right, do yes. you think resurrection applies to God? Because if someone who doesn't die, resurrection doesn't apply. Know, like, why? About 10 minutes ago, I asked you to tell me about Isaiah 53. Yeah. I'm still a little further on. 
Say never, again? You still never explained it. I did. I told you that prophecy is not about Jesus Christ. You started talking about different things. No, I told you that prophecy. You that, what does that mean? Yeah, that prophecy is not about Jesus Christ. That's the first thing you need to understand. Because Jesus never acknowledged that he was a Yahweh. Okay? Jesus never acknowledged that he was God Almighty. In fact, every time he spoke, he clearly stated that he was subservient to God Almighty. You know, even after he conquers death, he hands his kingdom back to whom? 1 Corinthians 15, 24. He hands his own kingdom back to his God. So who was Isaiah talking about? I'm not going to dispute with you. I'm not going to say you're wrong. I'm not going to Bring say up the right. passage I'm and then just, we'll discuss. I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm telling you that is not about Jesus. Because Jesus never considers himself to be God. Will you tell me who is it about? Because when he talks about, you're talking about the one where he says, my Lord said to my Lord. Is that the one? No. What does he say? Remind get me. It yeah, get it for me, no problem. While you're getting that, let me just complete the passage I was saying about Jose, uh, 1 Timothy 6.16. God, that doesn't apply to him. Hence, resurrection doesn't apply to God. The fact that both of these apply to Jesus Christ proves that he's not God Almighty. Listen, boys, I respect all of this. Yeah? Say again? I respect all of this, yeah? And I never come here to debate. I just want to ask the question. We're we are learning. We're not debating. That's why we're not recording. We're, we're, we're learning, inshallah. So, sincere question, that's what we're death, all about, both sides. The reason death doesn't apply to God is because God is immortal. But, but you, Jesus wasn't. Would you be honest? Yeah. It does it not look like Jesus is the one who fulfills it? Which one? Read it and then that's we'll that's see that's if that's it fulfills it. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than welcome to read it. Do you know, I should read it. 53 what? Which one? Read it all. Who has I'm believed honest. our report and to him has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form or, or com commonliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You, you think that's talking about Jesus? Carry on, no, carry okay. on. I mean, you read it if you want to read the whole thing. But I don't know which point you're making because yes, but it goes I need to on know. To say about him being crushed for our iniquities and, and stuff like that. Okay. The passage that I just read. Do you think that talks about Jesus? So you need to read it all. Okay, read it all. Go on, read it all. And as a root of the dry ground, he has no form of calmness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is. Sorry, you you didn't read this bit. Yeah, I haven't got to it yet. Oh, sorry. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of many people he was stricken. And they made his grief for the wicked. But with the rich at his death, because he, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was cut Sorry, he has put him to grief. Yeah, when you make that. his soul an offering for sin, yes. Yeah, so he's saying it's yeah. okay. Carry on. He shall, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied by his knowledge by righteousness. Servants shall justify many, for he shall bear the iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spine. With the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he was born, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Okay. Do you believe that's about him? You're asking me a question. Help me. Don't Shall you? I tell you why it's not about Jesus? Just one, one passage from this nullifies his Jesus. This is the key one. I think it's uh, number. So this is Isaiah 53. Yes. Number one, just one sec, can I just read it quickly? Anyway, in one he said he will not open his mouth, 
did Jesus open his mouth when he was crucified? Yeah, he did, but that's not the main point. The main point is this one. In the cross and in the way, when they beat him, he said, will you beat me? He opened his mouth. That means this prophecy is not Oh, here it is. There is a part So Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, yes, verse number 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. Yes, so who he's pleased, sorry, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Who, who bruised uh, Jesus? So I'm asking you, who fulfilled this prophecy? I don't know. You have to ask the Jews, but it's not Jesus. And this is the reason I'm saying it's not Jesus. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Do you think the Lord was pleased that he was bruised? Well, that's what the, that's what the prophet Isaiah wrote down, yeah. Well, but you believe it's about Jesus. Do you think God Almighty so that's what... was pleased that he was bruised, so you... that he was harmed? by his enemies. Second, yeah, that okay. is one point. Well, the says, second point, okay. it says, he has put him to grief. So God put him in, in grief. Yes. yes. Then he says, when you, by the way, the Y is capital there. When you meaning God Almighty, when you make his soul an offering for sin. Yes. So God is himself is making an offering. To whom? Whom is God offering? Normally you offer to God Almighty. So whom is God offering his soul to for the sins? Thirdly, he shall see his seed. Does Jesus have any seed, any children? Um, that is the key point I was wanted to make. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. We know Jesus' days are not prolonged because he died as soon as after the crucifixion. That's it. Boom. According to the scriptures. Yes. His days were not prolonged. If he was prolonged means he was saved from the crucifixion. His seed means he had children after the crucifixion. There you go, my friend. Just one verse from the entire passage Isaiah 53 10 nullifies Jesus there you go my friend I don't really know what well, did he have any seats let's put it that way but I just he didn't have any children did he did he have children I just asked you I just asked you the question who no you, I'm telling who, you who do you think it is? I'm telling you it's not Jesus okay, many people not saying or saying ma many about, people believe that this right. is talking about Israel as as the land Okay. As as Are as the sure nation. Give, at least you're giving me an answer. Yeah, okay. I give you the answer. So okay. you think it's Israel? Yeah, because I think uh, what is his name, um, Rabbi Tobias Singer, he was asked the same question, and he talked. He, I, I believe that he mentioned this is talking about Israel as a nation. Yes, because they were they were bruised and they were basically beaten down by many people. But it says him, and he will yeah, be. this bruised. is allegorical. Okay. Allegorical. But for which means transgression. Which means figurative speech. Yes. Because yeah, yeah. the nation of Israel was beaten up by many people throughout generation, throughout the history. You can look up, look up the history. They but were it, but, they were basically it, persecuted sounds, by many people. But it does sound like a person. It does, but allegorically, the people who read it with context, they'll know. For example, imagine this: if Jesus had children, if God has a son, yes, he is automatically a God. If Jesus has a son, would he not also become but God? Don't, but don't Christians. Do it, it refutes the very point of Jesus' divinity that if he had a son then we have many gods you know what I mean it completely if you think that is talking about Jesus then it's going against your very belief I just asked you the question who do you think that is I told you right. you think it's Israel according to the Jewish understanding it's Israel for me look Isaiah 53 is neither here nor there because this is a book that we don't believe in yes this is something that the Quran and the Prophet doesn't tell us so we we reserve our judgment for that I'm going by what the Jewish people, they themselves interpret this as. Because you know, normally when I want to learn about a particular religion, I go to the scholars and I ask them. I don't go to some trolls on the internet, those people who make fun of those religions and ask them. So if you want to know about Islam, Johnny, I give you the same suggestion. Go to the original sources of Islam. Don't go to some anti-Islamic websites. Yes, and this is an advice for everyone, regardless of whether you're researching Islam or Christianity or Judaism. Go to the authentic sources and find out what it means. Find out the exegesis of Isaiah 53. And all the Jewish people who interpret that particular passage, they will tell you firmly that it's not about Jesus Christ. Because it doesn't make sense, even in the context. Even if you read it, it doesn't. Jesus did not have children. God did not prolong his days. And God did not become happy by putting him on uh, at the mercy of his enemies. This is against the nature of God. Yes, God loves his chosen ones. And that is the reason we believe that Jesus was saved from the crucifixion. Jesus must have prayed to God Almighty and his prayers were heard. You know what is the nar narrative of the Christians? That when Jesus called out to God Almighty in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he puts his face on the floor, 
and he begs and pleads with God to save him from the crucifixion. He says, take this cup away from me. Yes, show me another way. Let it be your will be done, not my will. This is Jesus pleading, literally putting his face on the floor and crying out to God. Yes, they said that when he was sweating, it is as if there were beads of blood flowing from his head, which shows that he was in deep agony. He didn't want to go through with this crucifixion thing. He wanted God to show him an alternate way. Now, now imagine if this was the only objective of Jesus Christ. Don't you think that he's jeopardizing your uh, salvation by saying that God saved me from this you, objective of yours? Do you believe the New Testament is the word of God? Not all of it. There are certain things so in the New Testament. The part that you're quoting, that is we use the Quran the as the criteria. So how do you know that? We know the Quran is the word of no. God because just like you know the Bible is the word of God based on your criteria. Help me to understand why is it the word of God? Well, first and foremost, one of the key things that Allah says in the Quran is that if this book is from anyone other than Allah, surely you'll find contradictions and discrepancies in it. Yes? Go and look at the Quran. Read it for yourself. Find out if there are any contradictions in the Quran. For 1400 years, this test remains. Yes? And we found many, just like the passage in Isaiah 53. Yes, the one that you quoted yourself, we found contradictions in that itself. Not really. Well, we did because not God really. God is not pleased not really with sacrificing His own chosen people. I'm very patient to listen to everything you said. Yeah. Yeah. Shall I show you contradictions? There are many in the Bible. I don't mind. Yes, that shows that it's not a book of God. Well, the Bible <clears throat> never came to you. Well, who? Jesus. Bible. Yeah. The Bible never came to be the word of God. But the Quran does and give you two reasons why. Don't, don't Timothy say it's inspired by yeah, but that's different. You know, a poet can be inspired by the tree. It doesn't mean God is yeah, the one revealing to him about the tree. It is just his perception. So if you, read, if you read the beginning of Luke, he tells you that, my dear Theophilus, about a king, yes, that it seemed nice to me to also write because the other people are writing. Yes, it shows that something is in vogue, something is in fashion, you start writing. He never said that this is something that I was inspired by God Almighty. However, about the Quran, like the brother made a good point, God himself says in the Quran that which means it is we, surely it is we who reveal the Quran, the dhikr and surely it is we who will preserve it. So you see the preservation of the Quran itself is proof that this is something which has been preserved for the past 1440 years and more shows us where is the Christian Bible you know if you look at us awesome, and where are the first century manuscripts they have none it's zero manuscripts in existence today so how can you tell what Jesus really preached you know all those red light uh, red letter uh, words in the Bible that people think or assume that these are the words of Jesus there is no way to verify these are the words of Jesus because the earliest manuscripts are destroyed are gone there are no more so how can you tell something from the fourth century the earliest, I think, intact uh, New Testament that you have, yes, full, is from the 4th century and even beyond. How can you tell something after 400, 300 or 400 years that this is what Jesus said? When, you, when, the, ori uh, when the early manuscripts, forget the originals, when the early copies of the copies are gone. And not only gone, if you look at uh, Dr. Bart Ehrman, you know, who's a scholar of the New Testament, who's a former Christian and who actually studied the Bible and its uh, texts as a scholar and as a historian, he tells you that all those fragments and all those different versions of the Bible that, that you have, they differ from each other in thousands of places. In fact, he says that there are more, there are more variances, more differences than there are number of words in the Bible. Do you get paid for this? Do I get? Paid. For what? For what you're doing with the I get paid from my God. I get rewarded from my God. You know what I mean. I know, I'm telling you. You know what I mean. I don't take any. Like is this your job? I don't take any what money I mean, from anyone. If that's what maybe I said it wrong. I should have said it. In event, like, is this your job? Sorry. Is this your job? Oh no, this is my Sunday down. So I have a normal job during the weekdays. What do you do? I'm an IT consultant. Oh. What do you do? May I do home information? Home information. Oh, that's good. I might need a service one day. Never know. <laughs> but so was the New Testament. Is it ever complete? It wasn't corrupted at one stage. Forget about complete. We don't even know who the authors are of the New Testament. We don't have the early manuscripts. We have nothing to prove that these are the words of Jesus. So what you're basing your faith on, my friend, is based. Well, I'm asking. Well, I'm asking the question. Okay. What you're uh, what you're basically uh, basing your faith on is the church, the teachings of the church, and that is what I'm saying your core doctrine. Like for example, the Trinity itself. 
was something that was established in the fourth century. Centuries after, can you believe it? What about the men who died for believing in Christ? Wouldn't it have been easier for them to save yourself from reject? Well, they didn't die for Trinity, did they? Well, there are many people who died, many prophets who died at the hands of the Jewish uh, people. It says so in the Old Testament and in the Quran as well. Is it correct or is it incorrect that ten of the apostles died for believing in Jesus? Yeah, I think all the all the apostles, if you ask me, they died. They were they were either crucified. Yeah, they do because they were firm believers in the faith. Again? Was ten of them killed for believing in Jesus? Who was killed? That's what I'm asking you. I think they were they were killed for their faith, because the Romans the Romans didn't care what happens. They wanted to maintain order in their land. So even the crucifixion of Jesus. Remember, Pontius Pilate said, "I wash my hands of this uh, uh, this sin or whatever this uh, act that I'm going to do," because he wanted to establish. Because whenever people say that he's the king of the Jews, yes. Now this was some sort of a, what is it, a threat to the Roman kingdom, to the empire, the Roman empire. They don't want anyone other than the, the Caesar to be the king. So this is a threat to them. And the, the Jewish people somehow convinced them to crucify Jesus. By the way, do you know there was another man? Yes, his name was also Jesus. He's okay. called Barabbas, the son of the father. <laughs> do you see, is that a coincidence? How do we know who got crucified? Maybe it was Barabbas, you know, not Jesus Christ. Because he said that I'm going to, I'm going to uh, make one person, one of these two, I'm going to let go free. And he asked the people, whom should I let go free? So we don't know which Jesus died, whether it was Jesus Christ or Jesus the Barabbas, the son of the father. I've last one before. Yeah, go on. Will you help me because obviously I don't debate. Right? Mm -hmm. I just want to understand when a Christian asks you a question like when Muhammad said that the sun goes down in the perfect world. Oh, no. I need to understand it. That's fine. It's, a, it's again allegorical. So the Quran, this is in uh, Surah al kahf chapter 18. You're mostly sick of her. No, no. Things. Do you know Noah? Because Noah's, uh, is, is, well, are, are you, sorry, are you, if you say travel with me, what do you say? No, I don't want to yeah. Is that what you say? Are you, is that, yeah. Because Noah yeah. comes here and he's like that as well. And he asks the same question. Yeah. Now we're good buddies, but. I don't think I know Noah. <laughs> is it? I'm not sure. But he asks the same question, the murky water. Well, actually, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, like I heard it. I don't really read it. And so understand. If, if, if I ask you, the sun sets at the horizon. Is that a correct statement? Yeah. Does it set at the horizon? Yes. Literally? Not literally, but it looks like it. It appears like Why did you not say literally? But we know it's not Absolutely. Literally. Same concept with the murky water. Yeah, but the way... It's allegorical, not literal. So when, when he says that it appeared, it appeared to him or it, uh, that uh, Zulkarnain perceived as if the sun is setting, that the sun, he, go, he went up to the point where the sun set in murky water. Yes? So it was from his perception. From the perception of Zulkarnain, it is not Allah saying the sun sets in the murky water. No, yeah, there's a way of proving that, if you don't mind. Yeah, go on. In the next, very next verse after that, it says he went to the, because he went to the one side of the world. Then he went to the other side of the world, and he found the sun setting upon a people who had no shade. Now, if we were to take this literally, then should, apply can, both should we say yeah. that the sun is actually landing on their head? No, we wouldn't. It's ridiculous. So, no one, nobody in Arabic ever saw this, and nobody. It's just unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, Johnny. Yeah, people are very desperate sometimes. Not not yourself. I'm saying those who create these arguments are quite desperate, and they don't tell you about the following verse. Like I said, you know the best, the best uh, command. Sorry, the people who had the best command on the Arabic was during the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So imagine if he actually came to them with such a passage, yes, they will be the first one to point it out because they know the language, they know the context. Oh, his enemies, yeah. Yeah, they know the context, they know everything. For 1400 years, all right, no one objected to this particular passage in the Quran. It's only the modern apologetics, the Christians who come up with this. You get it, the thing is, you know, just like you said, the sun doesn't actually set at the horizon, but it is something which is metaphoric and not literal. Yes, you use your intellect, and I would say use your intellect with regards to this passage as well. And then you'll come to the conclusion that Allah is not talking about a literal. Neither is Sulkarnain talking about a literal setting in the murky water. It's quite simple, really. Because look, those people, they, they used to have some technology which used to allow them to go far away places, yes, and establish this wall of uh, metal and so on. Yes, they, they build the, not they, not Zulkarnain, but they build the pyramids. So just because the people at that time doesn't mean that they don't they are stupid or they don't know about technology and they don't they are basically a thick or something they have a they had a lot of technology and intelligence that we don't know about today in our modern day uh, in, in our modern understanding so yeah is that clear to you does that make sense Johnny? I understand what you're saying yeah. yes but 
have a bad memory. I know it's, there's some other parts that I just can't remember because the interpretation, you say something different. That's right? literally what it is. The sun sets in the murky water. Now, what they're trying to say by that is, I, that is the setting place of the sun. I don't know if I'm wrong, so I have a bad memory. I need to check it out. Let's put it this way, Johnny. As, as Hashim pointed out, the core enemy, forget today, a thousand four hundred years later, the core enemies of Islam were at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Don't you think that they would have brought this argument up? Okay. I mean, like, it's Does common it not sense. Say you can actually find the people there or the sort of sense or something. No, no, no. In the, he went up I to the be, point. I could be wrong. Up to the point where the sun sets. You know, like, basically, he's trying to tell you, I went up to the point that I could no, go no further. Yes. That is, in, in, in a nutshell, that's what he's trying to say. Okay? The setting place of the sun. The west, that's what we yeah. yeah. You you look like a person who is an o who's open-minded person. If we gave you a copy of the Quran, would you read it? To be honest with you, no. Why not? Because I don't believe in the word of God. I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah but you haven't, you haven't even looked honest. at it. How can you that's already conclude that it's not the word of God? Because like the Pharisees. Okay, no the Pharisees denied Jesus. Yeah, Johnny. But I've also heard educated men who know the Quran and the Bible. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I think that they make more sense. Are they Muslims? Mm -hmm. When you say educated men, do you think the exactly. Pharisees were educated men? Well, well, we're not talking about the Pharisees. No, but we are. You, you, today and age, no, right? even today, just because they're educated. Like for example, people like uh, Dawkins. You know, he's an atheist. He's an educated man, but he, he rejects God. It doesn't mean that just because they're educated, automatically we should assume that they are they are the ones who are going to be saved. I don't know what I and I don't think anyone does. Know. So if you don't know. Why don't you look into because the Quran as well with an open you mind? You can't reject Johnny then. That's no? true, there is no reject, but I've asked myself the question, what is the truth? Yeah. For example, the Pharisees, sorry, sorry, sorry to cut you off Johnny, yeah? You know the Pharisees, yeah? Okay. When Jesus, peace be upon him, came to them, yes? Okay. You know who the Pharisees are, yes? yes. Right? They were the top-notch scholars of the Jews at that time. Yes, they well. denied him. Yes, we Muslims true. say that Jesus, we accept Jesus Isaiah, as a prophet. Isaiah 53 said it. No, no, but hold on, hold on. So, so, before we go over there, yeah, my point is this, Johnny. You haven't looked at the Quran, yet you're rejecting No, not rejecting it. You don't want to look at it. Fair play. Okay. That's your decision, Johnny. The Pharisees were doing the same. They said, I don't want to hear you. Okay. I don't want to hear you. Because you see, look, and they were like educated. I said, on the day of judgment, you and I are going to stand in front of God. Yes? When, you, when you are going to stand in front of God, yes, and you realize that Islam is the truth, you look upon this day when you had the opportunity to that's look true, at the Quran. Yeah, that's yes, true. and it's trust. vice versa. No, but tr and trust. It's also vice versa. Too. Yeah, it does. He knows, he but knows we, we did look at the Quran. Bible. We didn't have a close mind. It's the other way around. And Jesus, who he is, who what Christianity. Yeah, yeah. Is. So look at the testimony of Jesus, who never claimed to be God, who told you to worship and God, he and he did worship God. Yeah? And I'm not holding my hands up saying that I know God. No, but you already said so, that I don't want to look at the Quran. Why? Because when I hear explanation from a Muslim point yeah. of view and an explanation from a Christian point of view, I personally believe that the Christian point of view makes more sense. But what? you don't know the... the but you haven't looked at the Quran. Okay, Have you? But, but, so you cannot say but, I, but, I looked but, at both yes, equally. What makes more sense? Yeah, when example, you find yeah. out what's wrong with the Bible and someone points out what's wrong with the Quran, yeah. And you look with the Old Testament and stuff like that. I'm just saying, I don't know if it's true or what's true, but I believe that the Christian point of view gives a better explanation. You know, you know, Johnny, with all due respect, if you look at the Old Testament and the New Testament and the Quran, one message is very clear throughout, the, throughout, the, throughout these scriptures. You know what that message is? That God is not a human being, that God doesn't die, and God is not a triune person. Now I you're saying you're agree. saying you compared Christian view and Islamic view. Well, I hear yeah, I know. That's what I'm telling you. Yes. Even if you look at the explanation that the Christians give you with regards to the Trinity, and when the Jewish people and the Muslims, who are actually in agreement that God is not a triune God, that is not that He is uni person and not a tri person God. In fact, from the Abrahamic faith, I believe that Christians are the odd ones out. The Christians are the only ones who. Who say that God became a man and died for our sins? You see what I mean? You tell me what makes sense. That God is the one who is almighty or that God he died by his own creation? Which one makes more sense? You tell me. And be sincere and be honest. Yeah, but is it not more loving for God to die for you? Are you going to answer the question? Which is more, which makes more sense? For God to be almighty or for God to die by his own creation? For me, for God to die for his own creation. Do you think God can die? Because, Seriously? Because I don't think there's no more love that he could show you than to die for you. Johnny, dying for other people, yes, when, when we can forgive someone, it's not love. What would be love is for me 
Yes, imagine if there was a God Almighty. What would be loving is if that God saved his son, his uh, metaphoric son and his Messiah and was able to forgive you without taking the life of an innocent being. To me, that is love. What you're talking about is not love, but it's torture of an innocent being for the sins of the real criminals and the real sinners. To me, that is not love. To me, that is injustice. And this, you know why this is... Sorry, one sec. Do you know why that is not only unfair and unjust, but to me it is blaspheming God? Because yeah, God can never be unjust. <laughs> you know, so, yes? used to, innit? Yeah. yeah. When you so there you go. It, like... Which makes more sense? For God to be merciful and the, having the ability to forgive without killing any innocent animal or a man, you know, human sacrifice is one thing that God rebuked the pagans when they were doing it. You know, when the, um, uh, when the people were doing, uh, sacrificing the children to Baal, yes, the pagan God, he rebuked them for that. You know why he rebuked them? Because God says that this, this did not even cross his mind. That God would require sacrifice of a human being. Either a child or a grown up or a man. God doesn't need anyone's blood. You know, this is the Islamic view. That God doesn't require any animal sacrifice or a human sacrifice. Because this is something which God tells Abraham to do. Do you know what God did? Was Abraham at the end of that test successful in killing his son? No, he wasn't because God substituted the son with an animal. An animal sacrifice is not because of for the remission of sin. It is because of a test that you as a human being are going to feed the poor people, feed yourself, your family. Yes, and also to obey the command of God that this is what God commanded Abraham and now it's become the Sunnah of Abraham not the sin Sunnah of Moses or Jesus or Prophet Muhammad right. is a Sunnah right. and the, pra the tradition of Abraham so same thing with the with the uh, what do you say with um, circumcision yes do you think God can be circumcised seriously well, well Jesus was circumcised was he not what happened to that word became flesh you're the best love you lax me so much, you'll answer it yourself. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> at the end of the day, look, there are many things which don't make sense in the core doctrine of Christianity. If you look at the crucifixion, if you look at the original um, uh, doctrine of, uh, sorry, the original sin doctrine, if you look at God becoming a triune, all these are key, major doctrines of Christianity. Christianity Judaism, none of them, none of them make sense. Because the original sin, number one, it is unjust to kill either an innocent animal or innocent human being for the remission of the sin of the actual sinners. What does God say in, uh, in um, uh, Ezekiel 18? That the father is not accountable for the sin of the son and the son is not accountable for the sin of the father. Similar passage in the Quran that Allah will not hold others, uh, sorry, Allah will not put the burden of others on, upon you. This burden of sin is only put upon the person who sins. So only you who's, who's sinning will be accountable for it not your brother, not your sister, not Jesus Christ, no one. Yes? And this is something which is just. This makes sense. And this is what God Almighty is. And you know what is the most important thing? God says that even if your sins are greater than that of the mountains, yes? It exceeds everything that you can think about. Yes? God is able to forgive your sins without any shedding of blood. You know what does the Bible say? The complete opposite of that. The Bible says in Hosea 9, uh, 22, it says, uh, sorry, you, you, uh, your sins are not forgiven without the shedding of blood. He's not telling him not to. Now you see, Christianity makes shedding of blood as a central way of the, of the, of the, of the, of the remission of sin. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't do believe this. But you see, as a Christian, you have to believe this. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness in Christianity. But in Islam, Allah is the most merciful. One of His names and attributes is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. Ar Rahman is like encompassing for everything, everyone including the atheists, including the disbelievers, including every believer as well, he's Rahman over everyone. That means they are allowed to basically, I don't know, have a family, breathe oxygen, consume food and water. Yes, this shows that he's merciful even though they reject him. But his mercy is specific, he's a Rahim, his specific mercy is upon those believers 
that who acknowledge him and his teachings uh, sorry and his uh, message through the through the prophets that includes most uh, abraham moses jesus and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi you see we we worship all sorry we believe in all of them as true prophets of god we don't reject we, we are not like the jews who reject jesus and muhammad sallallahu alaihi we are not like the christians who reject muhammad sallallahu alaihi we acknowledge all the true prophets of god and that is the beautiful message of islam inclusiveness of everyone who accepts regardless of their background regardless of their color regardless of uh, which race they come from yes like jews they believe they are the chosen people we don't believe that we believe anyone who believes and adheres to the message of god is chosen by god to have salvation and that is the message of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the last messenger and if you if you read the quran i'm telling you once again please have an open mind and open your heart and read the quran if you have faith in your in your religion and if you are firm upon it nothing will shake that the reason you don't want to read the quran from your earlier admission is because maybe you're not firm about your own faith the reason we read the bible and the other books which are supposedly scriptures of god is because we have firm faith in our belief that islam is the truth that believing in one god without uh, associating any partners is a core doctrine of all the prophets of god is something which we know for a fact that nothing will shake our faith doesn't matter which book we read you see that is called open minded with an open heart and you see the more we learn the better person we become as long as you do it in a way which is productive yes so i'm not telling you to just go and read harry potter or something yes and read fictional books yeah i'm not saying not to read either but there are certain things which you read in order for you to understand what is the best way god has told me to attain salvation and by you distancing yourself from the quran all the understanding of islam you are actually risking of yourself risking and jeopardizing your afterlife imagine you went to the cinema and there are three movies running there yes you watch just one movie and you said that is the best movie that said i'm not going to watch any other movie that is the best movie but you didn't even give the chance to the other two movies that were playing in the same cinema you concluded based on just one movie i know it's a kind of a loose analogy but you see the point i'm trying to make is this look at all of that look at look at all the scriptures yes and I, you know what there are many religions in the world people will say why are you looking at islam only yes go and look at the religions and the faith which advocates monotheism because to me any religion which doesn't preserve monotheism doesn't advocate monotheism by monotheism i mean one god only not multiple gods like some religions advocate because what logic dictates what our own fitra dictates our own natural inclination dictates is this that if there were two powerful gods if there were if there were two powerful gods and they, and they both had equal strength e equal power then imagine if one god says i want sunset now and another god says i want sunrise now who's going to win you know what's going to happen it's going to be a fight and that is exactly what we see in the greek mythology in the hindu mythology which believes in multiple gods yes that's why i say at least research the monotheistic faith the abrahamic faiths judaism christianity islam you have looked into christianity yes you might have looked into judaism by by looking at the old testament give the quran and islam a chance yeah Okay, Johnny. Thank you very much for your time. Hopefully, we'll uh, meet again in the future, and maybe you can tell me something from what you have read in the Quran. Would you like a free copy? I can give you a free copy of the Quran. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Thank you.